uh, about this intraarticular nailing. First, we go for the. Uh, we need a plain X-rays. They should be of very good quality. In the plain X-rays, we can we can review the splits, vertical and coronal splits, and the displacement of the condyles. They can be better seen in the plain X-ray. If you can take a traction views, that can give you an idea about the articular and metaphyseal combination. Drap both the lower, lower extremities while performing the surgery, so that you can judge the shortening, rotation, angulations, and all other problems which are which may occur during the reduction placement of implants on the uh, injured leg. Reduction bolster we have already explained that it should be there, but if there is any posterior angulation is left. That will give you a hyperextension deformity and some pa some pain uh, while doing a flexion. So be careful that there should not be any posterior angulation remaining. Uh, where passing an intraarticular nail. You can use a distractor, uh, use a joystick method uh, to reduce the fragments and if need the fixation can be augmented by a additional circlage wires. Reduction we have already said that the pointed forceps can be used, Dr. Barua has already said. You also can hold the reduction with the pointed forceps then interfragmentary leg screws uh, can be applied, but axial alignment can be corrected during surgery by using a polar screws. Avoid trochlear stenosis. This is very important. Don't compromise with the uh, uh, congruity of the inter uh, these uh, condyles. A mild reduction of the condyles can give you a narrow trochlear notch. This will disrupt the patellar tracking. That will end up with the knee pain, inadequate flexion, and ultimately a patellofemoral arthropathy. The width of the notch is equivalent to the width of the thumb of the patient. We should remember this. You can put your thumb in, uh, during the surgery in between the internal condyle and notch. There should not be any um, uh, articular uh, irregularity and the width should be proper. So this, this is a very important point to judge the reduction of this, uh, this intercondylar notch. If, uh, for the approach, it is usually parapetalar approach in front of the PCL. Maximum distance from the PCL insertion should be uh, uh, 13, 13 millimeter. If you see the femur any time or any, at any time of the life, there is a epiphyseal scar seen. The epiphyseal scar has a, a, a apex and an entry point should be there. Usually when you take this entry, it is usually in the center of the uh, uh, canal in lateral view and you have to judge the uh, center of the canal in AP view. That is that, that line is known as the uh, Blumenset's line. So this is a very good uh, uh, this uh, uh, clue to have a proper entry point. If there is a strong bone, use a short nail. Metaphyseal fractures are better fixed with the short nail. You don't need a long nails for that. The periprosthetic fractures in presence of the good quality bone also you can use a short nail. The long nails are uh, required in uh, uh, osteoporotic fractures. If there are segmental fractures, including metaphyseal fractures, you can use a long bone. Diaphyseal fractures with uh, ipsilateral fractures of the neck, femur, trochanter, or metaphyseal fractures, you can use a, two implants for two fractures. The nail should be inserted usually manually. There should be a very gentle hammering. If possible, do not trim. Bury the nail deep to the cartilage. The risk to the trimmings are, if there is eccentric trimming, that can cause a cortical bone necrosis, fatigue fracture, fat embolization, uh, debris and synovitis which has come into the joint may give, uh, cause you synovitis and effusion. It is safe to irrigate the uh, joint at the end of surgery and put a drain for 24 hours. Distal locking should be done first so you can correct the uh, uh, reduction by, by traction. A radiolution drive is preferred. Do not hammer the cave. Usually, we people use a K-wire to point out the hole and you hammer on that. That will give you a micro fractures around the hole and that may end up with the loosening of the screws later on. So allow correction of the length with the traction and prevent the intraarticular protrusion of the nail uh, by fixing it first. 
we have different options for the digital locking, either at least minimum two screws digitally, that can be a 4.5 or 6.5, or we can have a spiral blade plate and one screw. Spiral blade uh, can have a better hold in the distal osteoporotic bone as it covers the more surface area of the cancellous bone. End cap is absolutely important in case of this uh, intraarticular nail because it gives a additional support to the distal screw and so it, it gives a little bit more rigid fixation in the distal uh, uh, fixation. Avoid injury to the PCL and the cartilage. It may end up with a chronic synovitis. It can cause you a long-term, a long-lasting effusion and a fixed flexion deformity and persistent knee pain. This is also very important. Synovial fluid has a fibrinolysin enzyme in it. So whenever you get a hemarthrosis, the, even if you tap after uh, 15 days, you will get a frank blood. That means that the enzyme does not allow the blood to clot. Now, if that, uh, that synovial fluid per percolates into the uh, pro proximally along the uh, nail, then it may, it may not allow the uh, clot formation very fast. This may end up uh, with a delayed union or sometimes a non-union. Nail is not always safe. Unstable configuration may cause a non-union and breakage of the nail. Avoid retrograde nailing in some of the cases like open physis injury, very short distal fragment which cannot accommodate two locking screws and cases of knee contractures. Be alert for some of the things. Fracture with posterior angulation more than 30 degree, do, do angiography to rule out the injury to the vessels posteriorly. Fixation with the anterior angulation leaves you permanent weakness at the knee. The quadriceps will become weak. And avoid long distance locking screws as hypertrophic ossification may be formed medially and which may give you a persistent knee pain. Early mobilization to avoid the stiffness. This is the most important after using intra intramedullary nail or even the distal femoral brace. Think about the method of removal of nail if full knee function is not expected. So we have to judge the prognosis of the patient according to the classification of the injury. Do not try to do miracles. Here there was a segmental fracture. Uh, the uh, we, uh, surgeon used a short nail and ultimately it was a stress fracture which occurred and uh, it was converted uh, uh, in a good union after using a long nail. Friends, one more announcement. We have a very good conference on the foot and ankle course which is in a collaboration with the U.S. faculty and that is in Ahmedabad. Uh, so uh, there are uh, these brochures are available at the many stores. Uh, so kindly try to make it to Ahmedabad. We'll, we'll try to be a good host for you. Thank you very much.